Arlene Dickinson is best known as the judge on the hit TV show Dragon's Den, as well as advising struggling companies on the big decision. She's the owner and CEO of Venture Communications, a powerhouse agency focused on marketing strategy. She's been inducted into Canada's most powerful women top 100 Hall of Fame, and she's the mother of four children. With all her spare time, she's recently <laughs> published a book called Persuasion, as well as a line of luxury products with the same brand name, including skincare, chocolate, coffee, and what we're going to talk about today, wine. Welcome, Arlene. Hi. Great. I'm glad you could join me today. Big fan of your, your book, uh, but we're going to focus on the wine. But before we dive into that, I would love to hear a little bit from you about um, your approach to persuasion, because I think it's part of a blend in all that you do. So, so how do you advise people to be persuasive without being aggressive? Well, you know, I, I really believe that there's three pillars to persuasion. Principled persuasion, because a lot of people think about persuasion as something that's either uh, about manipulation or coercion or somehow getting somebody to do something that they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that principled persuasion is all about being genuine, like telling people, you know, exactly who you are and, and uh, kind of being exactly um, the person that you are, showing up, same in business as in personal life, and being authentic, which is, um, you know, being who you are, being honest, being exactly the person you say you are, and believing in a win-win. So if you believe in a win-win, if you are genuine about what you're trying to do and you're honest and you are authentic, then I think that people will absolutely follow you and do things with you. Excellent. And do you think women take a, a different approach to persuasion than men? I know that could lead to a, a big generalization, but have you noticed some differences? Uh, yes, I think that uh, women find, um, I, I, I actually want to characterize that as maybe yes and no. I think sometimes in, in life I think women can be very authentic and very um, genuine and honest, but I think sometimes in business they feel they have to put on a mantle of something different, whereas a man usually doesn't have that same challenge. They, they tend to show up exactly as they are and expect you just to, to accept them. Uh, and women in business, sometimes we get in this, this rut where we believe we have to be somewhat different than what we really are, which is too bad. I don't think we do. Okay. And do you think that, um, you know, when it comes to women in business, there's some kind of pull or um, conflict between self-doubt and success? Do you think uh, women tend to struggle with that more? For sure. I mean, we, you know, I, I certainly think that most entrepreneurs in general struggle with self-doubt. I think that's one of the drivers of an entrepreneur. Women have a lot of self-doubt. We believe that our opinions aren't as valid. We're, we're told often that we don't have the same kind of voice or, or, or strength at the table. We, we're told that emotions are a bad thing. I, I think that's all so wrong. I think emotions are, in fact, exactly what you need in business because people follow people that they connect with that they feel um, are genuine about who they are and that are not unafraid to be leaders who are fallible and unafraid to be leaders who are um, connected. And I think that's what women do in spades. So instead of trying to be, it's not that men are wrong and women are wrong or right. It's not about that. It's just about being who you are. And in this case, if you're a woman, then you should take advantage of the things that you have. I think women have a different emotional connection and a chance to have an emotional dialogue that men will never have. And that, that's a huge advantage as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. And it may be just part of what you just said, but is there any particular advice that you give to young women heading into business? Take yourself seriously. I think that, and this may, I may sound very old when I say this and I don't mean to, but I think the professionalism that women uh, need to get back to a little bit. I think women have lost a little bit of that. Young women in particular are losing their, their self-respect. There needs to be a lot of self-respect. You have to really own the room and you have to own the room because of your presence and your intelligence as much as your physical attributes. And I think sometimes women, uh, young women nowadays are losing sight of that and they're, they're, they've gone too far the other way in terms of just kind of not being as professionally dressed and professionally put out as they need to be. And by that, I certainly don't mean you need to wear a three-piece suit. I mean you need to just take yourself very seriously. Hmm. And who's been your biggest influence when it comes to business? Who has most influenced your work style? You know, I think I, I haven't had one mentor in my life. I, I mean, my father probably had the biggest uh, influence in my life. 
I would say I've had many mentors in my life. I find that every time I talk to somebody and I spend real time with them and listen to what they have to tell me, they share with me their learnings and their, their stories and I learn from them. So I think part of what I would say the biggest mentors that I've had are, are have been people that were just willing to share their stories with me, their life's adventures, and from that I have figured out a way to be stronger myself. So I'm very grateful to along the way, no matter if I'm sitting at a dinner at a restaurant and meet somebody new or whether I'm at an event and I'm sitting beside a complete stranger or I'm uh, sitting on, you know, um, a bus next to somebody. Although I, I have to admit I have not sat on a bus for a while. <laughs> not until you deal with a busing company on one of the shows maybe. <laughs> I know, I know, I don't mean, I don't mean that. I just, I was thinking, as I said, that people are going, really, when was the last time you sat on a bus next to somebody? But I have spoken to people on buses and, you know, and, and, and everywhere, and I found my, their stories to be really helpful and really informative. Okay, and that, that leads me right into, um, you get so many requests for advice and tips and help. I mean, I'm watching you on Twitter recently, and it seems like someone is tweeting at you every 10 seconds. How do you handle all of that incoming um, questions and, and uh, requests? It's, it's, a, it's a really, it's kind of a timely question because this morning I was, I was looking at Twitter and I, I get a lot of people who send me such lovely, lovely notes. I mean, they send things and I go, wow, that was really uh, very special. And, and I, I'm often too, in, it's almost like I'm too embarrassed to write back and say, well, thank you, or to retweet it because I think people are going to think that's, uh, you know, somehow braggy, but I, I, I honestly can tell you that I am very grateful for the things that people say to me. It, it bolsters my day. It makes me feel good about, you know, the things that I'm doing. It, it makes me feel blessed. And so well, the people who do send me those notes, if they're watching this, I want to thank them for that because I don't often thank people enough because I'm a little bit embarrassed by it, but I, it does mean something to me. It helps my day be better embarrassed by it. You have had such success. How is it that you stay so grounded? Are you just naturally neurotic or what? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes, how do you stay so humble? <laughs> A complicated bundle of neuroses, I guess. Um, I, you know what? I, I never anticipated that I would be here in my life, and I think I know that the success I've had has come through hard work and commitment to getting um, you know, taking care of myself and my family. So I think it's because it's been unexpected and I, I know I'm, I do have a lot of self-doubt and I do know that I'm not that special and I'm, I'm just, I just feel, I don't, I, I, how could you complain about this life? You know, we live, we, and I mean that for anybody that lives in our country, right? How can you complain about this life? We have so much opportunity. And so I feel like I've just, I get up every morning and I go, thank you God for giving me this opportunity to do the things and have the opportunity I do. And I, my dad taught me that. My dad taught me to be grateful. And I think gratitude is something that is... Uh, being missed by many people in life. There's a lot of entitlement out there, and I think gratitude goes a long, long way. Wow. Okay. Well, I would love to stay on those topics all day, but this is supposed to be about wine. Um, so let's segue into that. Was wine on the table in your family home when you were growing up? It was not. I was, I was raised as a Mormon, so it was wow. not on the table in my home. No. Okay. Can you remember yeah. the first time you had a taste of wine, your first wine drinking experience? I can. I can. I was, uh, it, it was uh, towards my, uh, in grade 12, towards my graduation year, believe it or not. So I was a late <laughs> drinker of that, uh, characterized as a late drinker. Um, and uh, from there, I just started to really like wine. I hear there was a baby duck incident? Yeah. <laughs> There's been... <laughs> You know, there's some things that I'm not going to put on this chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I do understand about branding. All right, fine. Um, <laughs> I've, already got, I've probably already got people mad at me because I'm saying that they don't dress right. I actually want to go back. I'm not saying that girls aren't dressing right. <laughs> or that it's not okay to take the bus. <laughs> or that it's not okay to take the bus. Maybe I want to do this whole Google thing again. <laughs> go away. <laughs> okay. Um... So if you were to have um, a winery or winery owner or someone pitching a wine business on the Dragon's Den versus on the big decision, 
how would those two shows be different? What would you be talking about on the Dragon's Den when it comes to a wine business, and what would it be on The Big Decision? On the Dragon's Den, they'd be coming in, they probably ha would have gotten their wine started and their labels going, and their sales were just beginning, and they were trying to get it to the next level. Or they'd have the idea that they wanted to buy a winery, or they would be saying, you know what, now that we've done the red wine, we want to do uh, another couple different blends of wines. Um, on the big decision, they would come on and say, we've been running a winery for a long time, and our sales were really good, and then we made a mistake because we uh, acquired another winery, and we couldn't run them well together, and now our business is starting to suffer as a result. Can you help? So one is more mid-stage or later stage of a business where they have found themselves in a turnaround or in a, a situation where they're in trouble and their business isn't as successful as it used to be. And the other one's more of a startup, you know, we're just getting going, we need some help to take it to the next level. Hmm. Okay. And I know you're a big proponent of marketing, it's the focus of your agency among other things, um, to drive business results. What do you think that the wine industry as a whole needs to do better when it comes to marketing? Uh, you know, I think the, I think they do many things well. I, I do want to say that I think the wine industry does many things well. I think the the laws that are being, the, there are some laws that need to be changed in Canada, in part, particular that you know date back to prohibition uh, in terms of how wineries are able to market themselves and how what their geography is that they're limited to because of the challenges they face. I do think that, you know, the the, the challenge that in Canada the wineries have is that they are not doing a great job of talking about their point of difference past that they're Canadian wines. There are some great Canadian wines being made, and I would actually say that's true everywhere. The, the region itself needs to do a better job of talking about the value of the industry to the country, the value of the industry to what they're actually producing. In the U.S., they, I think they've done a great job of that. I mean, you know, we know about the Napa Valley, we know about Sonoma, we know about kind of what's happening there. We understand European and old variety old wines and how they've been um, evolved because they do a great job of marketing them. I don't think that's happening here yet. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, I'm going to wrap this part of our conversation up now, Arlene, but I want to come back, of course, and talk more about your wine, Persuasion, okay. and the blend, and, and we'll do a little bit of tasting together, too. Yay. <laughs> it's four o'clock, right? Exactly. It is here.